Good evening, class. To all, my name is Marsha Land, and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. To all Zoom participants, please mute your mic and block your cameras. Thank you. Welcome to another lecture given by the North Carolina Bible class. This school is, this is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Charlotte, North Carolina class was established in the year 2020. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The true name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will show proof that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have yeah, uh, Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, Everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him, in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as 
Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity and Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom, of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We will now have a prayer given by Dr. Sheree Williams. Uh, our scripture will be read by Dr. Katonia Parks and the scripture lesson will be Hebrews the second chapter. Dr. Williams. Good evening, class. Can you hear me? Yes. Let us bow our hearts and our minds. Dear Heavenly Father, Yahweh, our Elohim, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, we want to thank you, Yahweh, for giving us this great divine vision and revelation, which you originally gave to Dr. Henry Clifford Kim in the year of 1931 in Springfield, Ohio. After which he went into the world and taught the people this great divine vision and revelation 
that we might know you as you really are and as you actually exist, which is eternal life unto our souls. We want to thank you for the knowledge and understanding that you have given us down here at the end of this age. We want to thank you for giving us a better understanding of those things that we received early on when we became a member of this of these schools. We want to thank you, Yahshua, for casting out any unclean thing dwelling in our hearts and minds that is displeasing unto you. And we want to thank you for taking us out of that chaos and that confusion that's in the world, taking us out of that ethereal darkness and putting us in your marvelous light, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. We want to thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts and minds that translates us into the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah right now, that gives us eternal life right now. And we want to thank you for making us ministers of a flaming fire that we might be one with you at the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. These and many other blessings we ask in the holy name of Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Good evening, class. Good evening. Um, for the scripture lesson, I'll be reading Hebrews, the second chapter, and I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trana, the Scripture Research Association, incorporated and reprinted by Yashua Promotions. That's Hebrews, the second chapter. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, as at any time we should let them slip. For if the words spoken by angels were steadfast in every transgression, and disobedient received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by Yahshua and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Yahweh also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. For unto the angels he has not put in subjection the age to come whereof we speak, but one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man, that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that thou visitest him? Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Yahshua, because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, having been made for a little while, a little lower than the angels, so that by the grace of Yahweh, he should taste death for every <clears throat> for every man, <clears throat> for it becometh him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory to make their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctify and they who are sanctified are all are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will wait for Yahweh. And again, behold, I am the children which Yahweh has given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death that is, the devil, 
and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject, subject to bondage. For verily he took not, not on him the nature of angels, but he took on, on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Yahweh, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, or that he himself has suffered being tested, he is able to succumb them that are tempted. That's Hebrews, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Sheree Williams and Dr. Katonia Park. Before I call on our first speaker, our readers for tonight will be Dr. Katonia Parks and Dr. Hanifa Allen. And for our first speaker, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Ryan Harris. Dr. Harris? Good evening, brethren. Sorry about that. Uh, had it on mute. Uh, I'm happy to be here and happy to give a, a testimony about the great, wonderful things uh, I've come to learn and understand uh, in this teaching uh, that was given to our founder, uh, Dr. Kinley, in the year 1931. Uh, it's already stated in the moderation. Um, uh, this is uh, our founder had the vision. Uh, he had a panoramic vision as it's, it's, it's displayed on this chart where his vision encompassed the vision of Moses here uh, on the Mount, Mount Sinai and John on uh, the Isle of Patmos. You know, he saw the beginning to the end and all in between there. And his mission at the end of this age, as we, are, we live in this present kingdom age, at the end of this age down at the timeline is to, is just simply to confirm uh, what has already been said by all the law and the prophets, the law and the testimonies, and as the Holy Spirit had, had, had made an appearance through other vessels down the ages of dispensation. <laughs> so look at this Asian dispensation chart that's been mentioned over the last couple of classes. <coughs> we have you know, the seven ages and the, and the, the dispensations here, and, and we're right down here at the, at the line right here in this present kingdom age, and it has always been told and it's teaching that <clears throat> you always, always use one vessel. Uh, and I can say vessel, I'm not going to say man or woman, but he's always used one vessel at the end, the beginning and end of the age to bring up a, a part or bring forth his, his purpose, pattern, plan. So at the end of this age, we have, you know, he chose someone who was, you know, not, you know, not by the world standing, somebody, somebody great. Uh, who have was very prominent or affluent in the world it's someone that you know you would never think about and uh basically as it says you know that yahweh you know he uses you know he used those jews back there they were not special about them that was nothing great about them i don't have that scripture on top of mine but uh you know he would use this you know he would use the simple things to confound the wise that's basically i'm paraphrasing there if someone has any type of scripture on that or a verse on that just hold on that please get there because we'll make sure we provide you know uh a scripture to kind of put in context what I'm saying, but you know, in essence, it's basically who Yahweh is using because Yahweh, the reason why Yahweh does it because he wants to show how great he is and make it unbelievable uh, about how you know you could only give credit to Yahweh himself. And now our founder did the same, and, and also likewise, we have our own testimony once we get a true understanding and, and knowledge of this vision revelation that you know we say it's it's impossible as a man or as a seven woman or female or man to to get an understanding, we have to give credit to where to do, we have to give credit to Yahshua Messiah himself, you know, in a physical body, out of a physical body, because that's how the Holy Spirit will manifest in or out of physical body. So just wanted to say a couple of things right there real quick, but uh, kind of kind of give a synopsis of what the scripture lesson, what I obtained out of the scripture lesson. And I said, obviously, you know, these scripture lessons are, they're well thought out, you know, for us how they're picking. Yahweh uses a vessel to pick out scripture lesson, really to capture, you know, in essence, what he wants to bring forth in a in these sessions or so forth and so on. So, you know, in essence, what we understand is, is that this uh this story, John 5 and 30 now, we just kind of get the preliminary right there because 
you know, it all testify of one Yash Messiah, of what he's come to do. And, you know, we want to cover that real quick and understand that, you know, uh, this is not of our own. And I mean, that's what makes it so great. It's beyond what man could come apart or bring forth for us as teaching. So it's all about Yashmah. So I just get not John 5 and 39 real quick, because what we come to learn and understand this in this teaching is that uh, we, we have a Bible, we have tools, but this is a prescribed way how we go about to obtain knowledge and understanding, uh, you know, you know, to, you know, you know, in this situation is. So get job five and 39 and we'll kind of start there real quick and kind of keep in mind because that's the subject matter here when we get it. John five John. and 30. Oh, go ahead, Anifa, thank you. And just read it through 43, I think, 43 through four, okay. Get sure, not, not a problem. John five and 39. Okay. Search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. So, and okay. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Okay, so right there, you know, Yahshua is speaking those in those days, the you know, the clergy, the Sadducees and Pharisees and those folks telling that, you will not come to me, you know, and he's talking about what, you like, what eternal life is all about. So we kind of closely, methodically trying to understand what's been saying these couple of verses. The first thing we understand is it all testifies of one Yash Messiah. It's not about us, you and I per se. Uh, you know, we're 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 part of the, we're part of this we're part of the project you're playing. Yahweh has his mind, but it's really about him and his story. And we're come to understand we're become the sons and children of Yahweh. So we're one big family. But it's all about Yahshua. So we understand that then he made a second declaration that you will not come to me. So, uh, you know, because, you know, you don't have, you know, essence, he's saying, because you just don't know me. You don't have the love of, of Yahshua in you or the love of the Father within you. So there's no way. So they have to be drawn. And there's some scriptures that we have to talk about that, you know, Yahshua said he does choose. I think it's in over John 15 chapter. And we may pick that up. But uh he talks about what eternal life is a little bit. So get over to John 17 and 3. We want to get a definition. So what is this eternal life? You know, we live every day. We have this earthly life where we live and move and breathe and stuff. But, you know, Yash was talking about what is eternal life? Let's get that real quick. Let's define that by John 17 and 3. John 17 and 3. <clears throat> and this is life eternal, that they may know that thou only are the true El and Yahshua, the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Okay, that's good. That's great. There was a lot of things said right in that. So he gave a declaration or a definition of what life, eternal life or life eternal is about. It's about knowing. It's about knowing who. To know is really to, is to have something intimate, have an intimate knowledge or relationship with, with an individual entity. So it's, it's about knowing. So what we're, you know, we're minded to do is to go back into the law of the prophets, started with Moses, because we understand that Moses, the first five books, you know, Moses in the Bible, then you have the, the law and the testament following, you know, the, the Torah, the, the first five books. So we're going back there to get to understanding, getting understand that way we can know, understand we're knowing. So what are we looking for? We're looking for Yash Messiah. How are we looking for Yash Messiah? Well, in this teaching, Yash, you know, the founder has laid out through his vision, not by his own, you know, understanding or his own thoughts or his own mind is basically what he received by divine vision revelation is that you know we have a pattern in place we have principles that we're trying to extract uh from the pattern out of this these bible events that we see down the asian dispensation let me pull up this real quick uh, i'll pull up the, we're talking about the pattern or plan of salvation the chart of pattern plan of salvation so we ha have here picked totally illustrated all the different biblical events that happen throughout your Bible there, and they're kind of laid out in a more of a tabular format as a threefold tabular format right there. And then what we have here within this, these Bible events, we have we have the stories that, of the Bible, and they're the kind of and what the founder saw in his vision. Hey, it's just more than than a it's not a story as per se. I'm gonna say events. It's just more than events. We want to go and extract these these principles of blood, water, spirit, death. Burial, resurrection. These are manifestations 
everything, or they're all out through the Bible, okay, all through the Bible, and ultimately, what we want to see is that, you know, to really kind of bring it home to you, to make it reality, is, is, is the promise, to make it reality to you, is that you see these principles in your everyday life, you know, you see these principles where you can say, well, I've seen a principle of death, burial, resurrection, and it goes right according to the pattern, it, it lines up, in essence, you know, to the same principles we talk about death burial resurrection 40 because this purpose or this pattern is is ever repeating it's just a repeat coming down the asian dispensation but you see the events going on out in the world today you know we have the situation we've been in the last two years we have this situation of this virus this pan worldwide pandemic okay and, and what we extract out of that it we see death in that you know as death it, you know death of many and stuff like that we see these principles so you know we'd have to go back and pick up that and where do you find you can find that in the law of the prophets uh you know starting with moses uh with you know with pharaoh uh the situation here you know we have this chart right here we have the migratory pattern and we have the interior pattern but i go back to the main chart over here the moses chart we understand that down here in egypt you know we had the children of israel yahweh had had given abraham a vision and that vision that you know he talked about his seed singularly going down into a a unknown country you know you know and being evilly uh evilly treated but yahweh would show forth his salvation by coming down himself and delivering his children out of this darkness where there were plagues there were plagues down there was you know there was hardship by the the, the actual opposition or the adversary meaning pharaoh back here and his host they oppressed the children down here in israel but yahweh you know, he delivered them as a type, as a, you know, this deliverance is a type of salvation, as a type of a spiritual salvation that we are experiencing now after the death, the burial, the resurrection of Yash Messiah. So those are kind of things, you know, we, we kind of understand, but again, kind of keeping in mind what this is all about, uh, who's speaking, who's it talking. So it's about Yash the Messiah and how he's kind of come down. He says, and we repeat that real quick again, I think it's like 40, verse 40 there in John 5 and 39, because he talked about Yahshua and he talks about Elohim. So we want to kind of clear that up a little bit too and ensure that, hey, you know, when we talk about this one Yahweh Elohim or Yahweh himself, you know, we're talking about the unity of the spirit, meaning that there's, there's, there's Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, but these three are one. Uh, let's pick that up and I'll pick up some more verses about the unity of the spirit real quick. But get that real quick back in John five and i think it's around five third 40 41 five and 42 okay five and 42 thank you okay but i know ye but i know you that ye mm -hmm. have not the love of elohim in you mm -hmm. i am come in my father's name and ye receive me not if another shall come in his own name him ye will receive so so right there he's speaking so we know who's speaking in red tag he's speaking that's joshua okay and we understand he's he's come in his father's name okay he's He's mentioned the Father, okay? And then he mentioned Elohim, okay? So we have those, we got two mentioned there, then we know that's Yahshua. So we got Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. So he's coming in to do the work, but what's its essence is these three are one. We have in on this chart here, we have Yahweh, which is pure spirit, okay? In this state, he's incomprehensible, he's inscrutable. He's representing by this cloud, goes right all around the chart, okay? And then we have right here, we have this, Elohistic shape and form. This is the word or son, as it was mentioned in the in the actual moderation. These attributes, wisdom, divine wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, foundation, power, strength, these attributes transmutated, taking on shape and form as Elohim. This is a super incorporeal. We talk about the word incorporeal means uh beyond the flesh or beyond the physical, but this is super incorporeal, okay? And Keep this in mind, and we'll talk about this a little bit. It talked about in the scripture lesson how that Yahshua was made a little bit lower than the angels. So let's put that in proper context. We have Yahweh in this pure spirit state that we cannot perceive with our natural carnal senses of touch, taste, smell, and, and touch, taste, smell, and hearing, okay? And, uh, you know, and Yahweh takes on shape and form as Elohim or Eloah, right? This is a super, meaning you put the word, you have to put the, I guess the prefix super. It's just not incorporeal as the angels, because the angels being incorporeal, meaning they're beyond the flesh, they're invisible to the naked eye, 
but Yahweh is super incorporeal, so he's above the angels, okay? He's super. He created the whole creation, the things you can see and the things you cannot see, meaning he created the angels, okay? So he's super, okay? But in his purpose, as Yahweh's taking on shape and form and he's coming down, eventually he's going to take on shape and form as it's been prophesied and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Yahshua, Yahweh, you know, through a death, you know, a principle of death, a principle of blood is coming on down to take in shape and form as a man, okay? He, 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 he suffered himself to put himself in that situation right there. So I'm not going to ramble too much on that, but just want to keep that in mind that this is Yahshua right here, okay? Walking the earth plane, you know, made a little bit lower than the angels. Let's get back over that scripture lesson when it talks about that over in Hebrews. Made a little lower than the angels. Okay, let's get there. Yeah, I don't know what verse that was, but I think it said it twice uh, over there in our scripture lesson. How about Yahshua being made a little bit lower than the angels? Hebrews, uh, <clears throat> the second chapter, and okay. let me, let's see the eighth verse. Hebrews 2 and 8. Okay. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Yahshua because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, having been made for a little while, a little lower than the angels. Hey, stop right there. Thank you, uh, Miss Park. For just a little while. He was made just for a little while. You know, I, I never really paid attention to that to now. Just a little while. So we understand that Yahshua's, you know, time on this earth plane, uh, 33 years, you know, he came in, born of the Virgin Mary, uh, was called, you know, you know, from the beginning by his father. The father just took on shape and form as Yahshua, born of a Virgin Mary. He taught in his ministry for 33 and a half years. So just for a little while, he manifested in this specially prepared body. This is a specially prepared body that, you know, at that time we knew as Joshua. Now, over it says, I think it's 2nd, 1st Corinthians 5 and 16, it talked about how we once knew, you know, Joshua after the flesh, while he was living, okay, upon his death, burial, you know, his death and burial, and his resurrection. But now us living in this age on this side of the cross, we know Yahshua no more according to the flesh because as is mentioned in the in the uh, moderation is the name of the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit in or out of a physical body. He says in or out of a physical body. So now the Holy Spirit, you know, he can be in us and he can be out of us. You know, he's all in all. But like I said, knowing that we don't look at Yahshua no more as this one on the cross. Uh, we look him now as he is now he's He's a, he's a life-giving spirit. He's that life-giving spirit. So he just had to play this role for a little while. But that's it. This is Yahweh Elohim and Yash because we think about the unity of the spirit. I'm jumping around. It's that Yahweh and pure spirit, there's nothing. He's the source, the substance, the limits and bounds of everything. That's what we talk about Yahweh, seen him unseen. Okay, then we have Elohim seen in divine visions and, and understood in divine revelation. That super incorporeal. The only way you're going to know anything about that, he's going to have to appear to you. He's going to call you into a vision and, and, and give you that understanding and the revelation. That's the only way you can kind of perceive of, of him in this state. But as he comes on down, he walks at first. He, he came into a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua. Messiah. So we have the Yahshua, the Holy Spirit manifested here. Okay. We, you know, we have it up in the church. Yash, this is the name. Yahweh is, is all in all. Elohim is a title. But the name of Elohim is, is Yahshua, which is the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit right here. The Holy Spirit just got in the physical body like a hand in the glove, as I was told by, by Dean. It's like putting a hand on the glove. You put a glove on. What causes the glove to move? The glove can't do anything of its own volition. It's, it's, that's, it's what's inside the glove that's causing the animation, the life, you know, and you look at the physical bodies. But not want to get too tracked, but this is Yahshua's side. So let's... Uh, Let's move on. Continue on a little bit more in the scripture, and we're going to kind of get back to some other things. Continue on back okay. to that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And the ninth verse. Okay. And so okay. for a little while, mm -hmm. 
let me start for continuity. Okay. But we see Yahshua, because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, having been made for a little while, a little lower than the angels, so that by the grace of Yahweh, he should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory, to make their salvation perfect through suffering. Okay. So Joshua did the suffering on the cross. This was ordained to do this, to, to suffer on this cross, to be, be illy treated. To, and this was done out of the ignorance, because, you know, if they, did, they didn't know who this was truly, who this one was on the cross really was. They didn't know who he is. And then the act of the day, those out there in the world really don't know who, what is salvation? Who is salvation? And, and we understand now we come to this school, we find out that the who, when, and why, and where, what, you know, what salvation is all about. And now let's get over there, back there in Exodus. Uh, let's start there in chapter three, because uh, I want to pick up the Ari Asher Aya, talk about that a little bit, because it kind of want to encompass the, the when, the where, the who, and how. When we talk about, you know, you know, the unity of the spirit, we talk about salvation, we talk about Joshua. We get over there in uh, Exodus 3, I think, uh, we're going to start there with the name real quick, and it's going to come down when he talks about the higher Asher Aya, things like that. Okay, let's get over there back to Exodus. Uh, start there at 3, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do three. you want to start at 3 and 10? That, that'd be great, just start okay. there. Yeah. Okay. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Okay. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, I will be what I will to be. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be has sent me unto you. Right. Stop right there. So right here where we have an example right here, it's kind of hard to see. We have here where we have Moses. You know he's on the backside. He's he's out here. There's 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 an angel. This angel appeared in this bush that was burning but not being consumed. He was told told to turn aside, okay, to partake of this bush. Now we understand it's holistic. What it means, you know, Moses is out there. Turn aside. Give focus in your mind to what's going on. So that's where the conversation, the introduction. Yahweh had to introduce himself to Moses, and you know, and Moses and Yahweh promised him that I would certainly be with thee. Go down there into the children of Israel, tell for and let let your people go. And Moses, you know, Moses being the, you know more of a, uh, a, a a passive or a, you know he has that type of nature, very a very passive, very uh, I forgot the word I want to say. Start with T, but the. Very passive nature, you know, not very, very confident in himself. And see, the, the good thing about this, you know, we look at that, you know, Moses was not basically nothing. He was very passive. He's not a doer, per se, as you want as, as according to the flesh. So it had to be something special that Moses had witnessed with this experience with Yahweh Elohim out here in the wilderness looking into the bush to give him the confidence, the courage to go down and carry out the instructions that Yahweh gave him. But basically, Yahweh told him, you know, you know, you know the Elohim, at the time, the people didn't know the name. They knew him as El Shaddai. They knew him as a title or what he had performed in the, in the, the previous, you know, dispensations and, and things like he was a provider. He provided this. He provided that. So they had some knowledge, but they didn't have an intimate knowledge. Think about this. When you want to know somebody, you know, the first thing you want to do introduction, you want to know their name. You may see somebody walking down the street, male or female, and they may do something. And, you know, Typically, if you don't know their name, you really don't really have, you don't, you're not really intimate with, you don't even know anything detailed about it. You maybe see somebody you're passing by, you may be on a vacation, some waiter may provide you something, or somebody may fill up your gas tank. Well, they're just doing a good work or, you know, things like that, but you don't know anything about them, you know, and in essence, this is where 
you know, when you bonding friendships with people, you want to get to know their name, that first girl on that date or that guy on that date, you know, you want to get that introduction. You must know that name. You must acknowledge them by their proper name too. You just can't call them by any other name. So those are some of the tenets we come to learn. We understand that his name is, his name is Yahweh. Uh, he has a title as Elohim. And at the same time, the name of his son, the name of the Holy Spirit in, and about, in or out of the physical body is Yahshua. And that's what we want to declare down here. So basically, he's given a name uh, of, uh, of the father, you know, right here. But he says it, it in essence. He said, I will be what I will to be. And we understand that as Ayer Asher Ayer in Hebrew. I will be what I will to be. And he demonstrates this in the fourth chapter uh, when he's showing Moses, building up Moses' confidence as far as what he's about to do. So, um, you know, we talk about the I will be. So let's let's give an example of that. This just don't talk about. So just turn to the chapter four and let's talk about the situation where Moses, God was working with him with the snakes and the leprosy and things like that. Uh, that's over in uh, chapter four of, of, of Exodus. Uh, he's kind of demonstrating the I will be what I will be. Let's pick that up. Exodus 4 and 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, Yahweh hath not appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And Yahweh said unto Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. That they okay. may believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right there in the example right here, we're showing that the I will be what I will to be. You know, in essence, you know, the snake that starts off as a rod, cast it on the ground. Becomes a snake, and then he tells Moses to grab the snake by the tail. And and and, and Doctor Kelly told us also too in this in this class too that you know hey, you need to grab you need to you need to you know you need to grab the snake by the tail. S is meaning that that satanic spirit, that old satanic spirit that that Yahweh created as an as a as a opposition to us as a it's an asset to Yahweh, but it's, you know it's somewhat of a liability to us, so it's an opposer to us. We must cast that satanic spirit or that snake by the tail by the way as you said the t-a-l-e not the t-i-a-l as moses did catch it by the tail because he's going to tell a lie you know whatever yahweh says the devil's going to say an opposite we have the example over there we're not going to catch it with the uh, story of uh adam and eve or the event of adam and eve i don't say the story but it's not the event of adam and eve yahweh said told adam in the day you eat of this tree you shall truly die so what is the what is the devil or the serpent Representing the devil, just typifying the devil. What does the what does the serpent tell Eve? You shall not. He put the word "not" in there. The word "not." That little word "not." You shall not truly die. So he's opposing. He's he's being an adversary to the the word of Yahweh. So he takes the truth and he twists it, makes it crooked. He turns it into a lie. You know, and and and, and now in this age, you know, Yahshua, he's got to make the crooked path straight. So the, the, the Yahweh makes it straight. The devil comes on, puts crooks and turns into it. And Yahshua's had to come back in here. He's got to make the crooked path straight. You know, he's got to straighten it up, get the story right by the death, the burial, the resurrection, blood, water, spirit, and these principles going down the ages and distance. So this is going to help us to get the crooked path straight by understanding these principles right here. So let's go back to uh, uh, Exodus 4. Let's continue on with the next example that uh, Yahweh is, is trying to convey unto Moses that I am the, I will be what I will to be. Let Moses know. Continue on, please. Thank you. Exodus 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. That they may believe that Yahweh Elohim of their, of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he okay. said, put yeah. thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again at his, as his other flesh. All right, right. So basically here's another example where I will be what I will to be. Uh, he put his hands in and he pulled it out. It's leprous. And leprous is known with a known disease. And that time around the world, we don't really hear much about that nowadays 
and especially in the Western civilizations, things like that. But it was a situation. So put it back in there. He's showing that, you know, he's showing, hey, I can heal it. So let's get over to Isaiah, what's it, 45 and 5. And we're just kind of describing, get, get in, we're getting to know who Yahweh Elohim is. And there's some other things we want to talk about too, because, uh, and now to get over in Isaiah 45 and 5, because one thing we got to understand this, and we've learned this recently, you know, for I learned this, I put it on myself, you know, when we talk about the Bible, we talk about these events, we talk about who's speaking. What we come to understand is that Yahweh, well, he created, Yahweh is the source of substance, limits, bounds of everything, okay? But when Yahweh took on shape and form right within himself in a limited capacity, not in totality, but in a limited capacity as Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh, Yahweh, we say Yahweh, the father in his pure spirit state, he went out of the creation business. Basically, he made, he took on shape and form, he didn't create. Yahweh Elohim. He took on shape and form. That's what he became. He willed himself to be Elohim, but because you know we can't understand it. But at this point right here, Elohim created the whole creation, created the universe, everything we see, the things we can't see. So when we talk about when reading in the scriptures, reading in the law and the prophets, who's speaking? Yahweh in his pure spirit state is not speaking. He's incomprehensible. He's inscrutable. So what does he do? He we have his mouth up here, right? Speaking the word down. This is this Yahweh Elohim in this shape and form is the mouthpiece. He's the one that's going to reveal what man cannot perceive or understand about the Father. Okay. And likewise, when the sun comes on down and takes on the shape and form as Joshua and worked the earth plane, all he's going to do is talk about his father. He's going to talk about, you know, he's going to talk about the father. He's talking about in this reference, this is Joshua, but that's Joshua's father right here. This is Joshua, and then you have the father back here. So we talk about father. This you have to put it in context. Let's put it that way. So let's continue on uh, as you had there in Exodus, please. I think you had to get uh, as, as, Isaiah forty-five five. Let's get there. Isaiah forty-five five. Isaiah, Isaiah forty-five and five. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. <clears throat> I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. Stop. So I, he's talk, stop right there. We're not going to stop right there. So basically, he's talking about we talk about knowing, having an understanding, knowing, but they didn't know him. No one knew them. Yahweh had to make himself known. They didn't know them. The reason why they didn't know him because they didn't, they didn't know his name either. So they, they didn't know his name. They didn't really know nothing about it. So it's about making an introduction to, to the, those souls who are being ignorant. And Yahweh has to make us make himself known. That's the only way because we can't figure him out. We can't read upon him or do any of those things. So Yahweh made an introduction. Continue on. Seventh verse. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create punishment. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Okay. Drop down. Okay, that's good, right? There. So basically, I, Yahweh, do all these things. Now, as I just mentioned there, it's just I just come to understand, yeah, Yahweh speaking, but you have to put it in context. Who's actually speaking? I said, this Yahweh, we said this is Yahweh. Yahweh is pure spirit. Yahweh is everything. You can't escape. Everything is Yahweh, right? But when we're talking, it's Yahweh Eloah, Yahweh Elohim. This is the one that's speaking through the, through the law of the prophets, from Genesis, you know, through Malachi. That's, this, is, this is the form of speaking through vessel, through man, through the prophet. This is the one speaking to Moses, making himself known, because this is inscrutable. Yahweh, that shape and form. Man cannot look at, can, cannot look at this and live, can't see this and live. There's some scriptures that I won't get there, but this is one speaking. So continuing, he says, I form the light, I create darkness. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create punishment. I, Yahweh, do all of these things. Okay. Drop right. down. That's good. I think that's good right there. So talking about Yahweh, I as we said, the vision, and we have the revelation, we have the illusion. Then we have these two different, these, these illustrations here. We have life, spirit, Yahweh, soul, Elohim, I will be what I will to be, body, Yahshua, witnesses, law and the prophets. And then the other hand, we have death, the father of lies, Satan, Lucifer, the devil. I will be like, see, he wants to be like the Most High. He, 
He's not a I will be what I will to be. So how close and similar it is, it's just a little change, a little change of what the devil does. The son of perdition, you know. Uh, so basically we are here, I form the light. When we say I form the light, he's not, you know, practical. He's not always not, he's not, he's not doing, he's not making, he's not taking something, a substance and making a, a, a figure or a Play-Doh thing. I'm forming something. That's him taking on shape and form. That's him through the power of transmutation, that pure spirit taking on shape and form as Elohim. This, that's what it forms. You know, it takes on shape and form. Think about water in the sky, water. You know, water is threefold, right? Or let's say H2O is threefold. It has a gaseous state. It has a liquid state. And it has a solid state. When it's coming down, it's basically it's taking on shape and form. When is it, if the temperature, the that conditions are right enough, that gaseous state will take on shape and form as water droplets in the cloud, then it will fall on down. If it's really cold enough, it'll take on shape and form as more of a substance as ice, you know, but it's still, it's all H2O, as we said, it's all H2O, spirit of Yahweh. It just has different states, you know, and, and that's what Yahweh is doing in his purpose. He has different states of existence. You know, he has two manifestations. He has, as, as Eloa, the creator, and then he has Yahshua as the Holy Spirit, as, you know, as the sun walking earth, as working the earth plane. But in essence, we have here, we've shown that y'all have been all in all. I form the light, I create darkness. Where did the devil come from? Yahweh can't be the all in all and be sovereign of all things, the whole things you can't see if he don't create the devil. The devil didn't create himself. Yahweh created the devil for his purpose, for his good. But we said, I form the light, I create darkness. I bring this is the peace, the peace of life is Yahweh, Yahshua, the Holy Spirit is, is the peace. That's the peace we want. That's the peace we talk about in our in our moderation, peace. Our slogan, you know, speak the truth, peace. And uh, and then we have, you know, obviously we have right here, we have calamities, right? Calamities of the world or calamity. I would say calamity for us, uh, you know, what we see this shape and form as the satanic spirit manifested in a physical body. What it's doing out there. It's a murder. It's killing people, right? It's it's doing all kinds of hideous things out there because you know, in essence, we know we have to. One thing I I can speak for myself. What I understand here, we're, we're we're you know we talk about well God above sun moon stars. No, we understand that God is all in all. Yahweh is all in all. But we have to we have to bring him down. We have to put him in a shape and form. We got to we got to see him working. He's work he's working through physical body. He get in a physical body. He get out of physical body. He, as we have in Australia, do a little work here, you get out of the physical body, all right? And we understand that also we have that adversary on the scene. We have that satanic spirits and the devil that were cast out of heaven. They were cast down to the ground. They were cast to the earth. They get revelations of uh, chapter 12. Uh, we'll quickly talk about that real quick. But there, these mysteries, we're talking about the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity, they're going on, they're operating, but they're operating through men. We see them operating through men, either unto righteousness, as we preach this gospel, where we see it out there in the world, the world of lies, the world of death, maim, you know, there's a lot of manifestations of evil out there too. Where did it come from? There's a satanic spirit that Yah created to carry out a purpose. It's an operation, it's moving, you know, it's going, doing according to its purpose. But thank goodness to the praise of Yahshua Messiah, we know that the end of the outcome is that Yahweh through Yahshua Messiah shall overcome death and destruction, darkness, satanic spirit. And bring us into the glorious of light. So get over to Revelation chapter 12 to think uh 12 and 1. Because I think it talks about both mysteries too as well. You want to pick that up quick. Revelations 12 and 1. Okay. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Okay. A woman cloth clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Okay, stop right there. So a great mystery. So John is looking, he's looking, having a vision. And he sees this woman clothed in the sun. Now, on this chart right here, we have an example. There's a woman clothed in the sun with the moon on her feet, stars of heaven. Now, I'm going to jump to another chart because, you know, we have to really, you should pay a close attention to these charts. So these charts are not backdrops. Uh, there's a lot of wealth of information. I apologize. We can't zoom it up where you can actually see some of the verses. But if you look at this verse, it says, I think it says Revelation 12 and 2. It's kind of hard to see on there. But we have other charts. Let me check to the elementary chart. There again, you have an example. The woman clothed in the sun. Okay, this is right here in this example right here. This is the event of the day of Pentecost 
where the Holy Spirit was poured out on all the Jews, the Jews of those times, 120 Jews in the upper room. That's Acts 2. And then later we in Acts, we said seven years later, we have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit once again, uh, you know, right here on the on the on the on the, on the Gentiles. But here's a sample where the woman in clothing some men chased by a dragon. So read there Revelations 1 again to start there, and I'll let you kind of read through that. Revelations 12 and 1. Okay. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. You see that? So I'm, just, I'm sorry to stop you here, but this one is trying to point So what she's reading there, reading there, the first couple of verses of Revelation 12. So let's pick, you see this, this dragon right there is after this woman, okay? is after woman and what this is in the context is this is that when yash messiah through his death burial resurrection the outpouring of the holy spirit he's placed his spirit in the sons the, the apostles and those believers they represent that woman they're clothed in the sun because now they're back in the they're they're part of the body of yasha they're part of the body but what happened they have to be persecuted you read up through Acts about the persecution of the, the apostles and how they died and things like that, preaching the gospel. They fear a lot, they feared not their life unto the devil, as it says later on. So continue on reading Acts, I mean chapter 12 of Revelation. It talks about the woman clothed with the sun. And we're talking about two mysteries. Now keep it up. We're talking about two mysteries. But keep in mind, I your Asher, I, I will be what I will to be. I form the light, I create darkness. We, you know, you got to give Yahweh all the praise. He's the all in all, that's all. There's no other L behind him. He's responsible for everything. Because you see, you see things that are contrary to good and love and, and righteous. You see evil out there in the world. Where does it come from? There's a lot of places out there want to say, well, why did God create? You believe in a God that created evil? You believe in a God that created disease and man and things like that? Well, God doesn't, he, he doesn't do evil things. He created the devil to do evil things. He don't do it to evil himself. He created the devil, but it's all for the purpose of Yahweh, right? You know, we come to appreciation day. Hey, if you don't have any darkness, you won't appreciate the light. Continue on in Revelations, please. Revelations 12 and 3. And there mm -hmm. appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, okay. a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns mm -hmm. and seven crowns upon his heads. Uh -huh. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven okay. and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And okay. she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was okay. caught up unto Yahweh and to his throne. Okay, great. So there's a lot of things in there that's been said about that. Like I said, and like I said, we had to come down to this school under the, you know, the auspice of this teaching to under, get some understanding. Now, we don't, you know, we learn in part. I don't know everything about, you know, the purpose of y'all. We will be learning the ages and dispensations to come, or the ages to come. But we just appreciate the little bit we do understand. We understand that in this passage, there's a lot of things it's talking about. It's talking about the time, you know, we talk about the time Yahshua walked the earth plane right after his death, burial, resurrection. He had poured out his Holy Spirit. He had, he had put his spirit in the, in the apostles and the believers. They, they represent that bride who's been restored back into the into the son of the father Elohim, okay, and they're being persecuted by this other mystery, the satanic spirit, okay, that goes out. It talks about a situation where a woman travailing in birth, being ready to deliver a child. You know, Dr. King talked about that. You know, that's actually a story. You know, how that Joshua, you know, the woman Mary, she gave birth through the immaculate, you know, process. You know, not no. She didn't have any relations with the man per se. It was by the divine imprecation by the Holy Spirit impregnated that woman, at the birth of Yash Messiah. Okay, but you know she was it was talking about travailing, but he was caught up, right? So meaning he was caught up, meaning basically through his death burial resurrection, he carried out his mission on the cross, and he went back to heaven. He was only like I said earlier. We said over in uh, in the scripture lesson in he uh, it was in Hebrews, I think Hebrews chapter two. Uh, I keep on messing up. But he was only here for a little while, 33 and a half years. 
and he went back, he sent it back to his throne, or okay, was caught up. So basically, we have Yahweh, you know, pure spirit state, taking on shape and form as Eloah, who's speaking through the scriptures, through Genesis 1 and 1, through Malachi and Genesis. They only knew him as El Shaddai as a tie. They didn't know his name until Moses. Moses was the first one that Yahweh revealed his name unto. So it's Elohim speaking. Then Elohim further came down with the power of transmutation, took on shape and form as Yahshua Messiah, who walks the earth plane, okay? And this one, this one here, he preached for 33 years, 33 and a half years, 33 years, right? Preached his ministry, did did the work with the Father gave him to do, went through a death, burial, resurrection. He returned back. He, he ascended back unto the Father, basically in his rightful place. He ascended back. So basically, the Holy Spirit, that flesh, went to the grave. He was consumed. It was put in the tomb. It was consumed. It had to be consumed. It didn't raise up three days of fleshly body as it's taught in the world out there because we have a pattern. If you go back and read Exodus chapter 12, we pick up the story of uh, the lamb that had to be taken out and had to be pierced on the side, had to be, you know, pierced in the side. And we took the four points of blood, put it over the lint on the two side posts. That is blood his. You got four points. That lamb, when they cooked it, Yahweh told him, don't, you know, you had to roast it by fire. Don't boil it. You know, don't smoke it on the pit cooker or the, you know, the, tra the Traeger. You know, you know, that's not just being funny. They, you know, that's what they have today. I like the barbecue. You got these smoking grills out there, but it had to be roasted with five unleavened bread and bitter herbs that was on the menu right there. So basically, what do you have? Yash Messiah, you know, he come in to fill. He had to fulfill every jot and tittle. That's uh, Matthew 5 and 17. He had to fulfill all things that was written according to him in the law and the prophets. So he had to be pure to the side. He had to have four points of blood. You see right here, two nails, one nail here, one nail there, one the feet, a crowd of thorns at four points, and he was pierced to the side. He's got to fulfill all the what the law and prophets. Get there real quick at five, uh, Matthew 5 and 17, just provide some scriptures uh, for what Yahshua said. He's declaring what he's going to do. I come into the field. Get there real quick. Uh, 5 and 17, Matthew 5 and 17. Uh, and we may have to get Luke 24 and uh, 44 and 45. Let's get that real quick. Thank you. Matthew 5 and 17. Okay. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For to verily I... To bring to an end. Continue on. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jaw of the smallest part of a letter shall in no wise pass from the law, no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Okay, hey, let me say, Old Testament being fulfilled, being nailed to the cross. So that's what he come in to do, fulfill, not to, not to, not to change it up, but to, to fill it or bring it to again, to bring it into its reality, as we talked about, to bring things into reality. We're down here at this school to bring it to your reality. To, you know, it says right here that the New Testament is written in the heart and mind. We say it's not on pen and ink. Now it's in the heart and the mind. Now we'll bring it into the reality. The scriptures, as it says in Galatians, was a schoolmaster to bring us to, to Messiah, to bring us to Yahshua, okay? To bring Yahshua in our heart and mind, really, ultimately, because it says over, like I said, 1 Corinthians 5 and 16, we once knew Messiah after the flesh, but now we know him no more, okay? So I got five minutes here. I'm going to put the five minute sign up. Okay, thank you. But uh, <laughs> to bring it into, to bring it into the reality, that's, we're down here to bring it into reality. Yes, we come here. To, we want to come to learn and understand. We want to read and understand the scriptures and understand what's on this chart. But the reality is, we have to know that Yahshua's Messiah is in us. Okay, He's revealed Himself in us. Okay, okay. And we're not about here. It's not about giving outward signs. We're not doing outward signs to show, hey, we have the Holy Spirit, whatnot. You'll know for yourself. It's between you. And, and, and Yash within you to reveal that to you, but that's that's the reality. If that's you know, I just want to be down here reading, ever learning, and not be able to come to the truth, the knowledge of the truth. To come to the knowledge of the truth is to know that hey, Yash within you, your only hope of glory or your hope of glory, Yash within this. So that's what we come to come to a profound knowledge to know that Yash was in our heart and mind. But first, as it's mentioned, we have to go back to the law and prophets. We have to start with Moses, as it is mentioned. And we have to understand those principles of death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, and forty. So let's go over and Luke. I don't know, Luke chapter Luke 24, 24 and 44. 
Well, pick up the first, I think pick it on up a little bit because I think there's two parts we need to pick up there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Help you out there, scripture yeah. Um, 24, 24 full, and... full, full, art, full, 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 slow part, yes. Okay. Oh, fools, yeah. 25. Yeah. 24, 24 okay. 25. Yeah. 24, and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Okay, and they drew not. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Stop right there. So right here at this point, Joshua has, he has resurrected. Okay. And he's going back and he's calling them fools and slow apart. Now, he's not saying fool to be mean at him, but just kind of slow full of heart. I, I would say it like that. Ought not. Repeat that, please. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Okay. And Starting beginning at, on, go ahead, beginning on. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Okay, so we know we get, we got Moses there. We in a different situation with Moses. We understand about the lamb being taken out, had to be held over for four days. That was their way of deliverance. That was their way of deliverance out of this state of darkness. Now on this on the charts right here, you you look at this, you have different colors and layers. But what we want what you to understand that this when you see black, it represents darkness, chaotic, right? You have black here. You go to this other chart. And I got about five. I got less than five minutes, so. We have these on these chains here, circle chains, chaotic. We have darkness here. Then we have persecution right down here, where we're at now. We have darkness, all right. So we have a darkness. You know, we have the devil on the scene, and Yahshua has to deliver us out of that. But just want to let you know that, uh, you know, obviously, you know, get over in Luke forty-four, and then we'll wrap it up. But you know, fools, fools are slow of heart. You know, he had to take them back, remind them, hey. I had to go through these things. I had to suffer these things. These, this story is written about me. If you get over with Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 53. You read, go back and read Isaiah 53. Talk about the sin-bearing Messiah. Talk about how the Yahshua coming in, you know, will have to suffer. That's, I, so that's that's the law. That's the prophets of the testimony. So you have the example of Moses with the lamb and how he delivered him out by taking out a lamb. And then you're going to read about how the prophets are going to have to testify what's to come through Yahshua. He's going to be a sin-bearing Messiah. That's not it. We don't have time to read that. Let's finish up with uh, Luke 44 and then I'll. Uh, Luke 24, 24 and 44. And he right. said unto them, right. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses mm -hmm. and in the prophets and in the mm -hmm. Psalms concerning me. Mm -hmm. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And okay. he said unto them, Thus it is written. And thus it behoved Yahshua to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. So with that in conclusion there, thank you so much, speakers. Uh, with that in there, basically the scriptures, it's a story all about Yahshua. And Yahshua is telling you many examples of look out for the principle, how that there's a death, burial, resurrection, that how he had to suffer throughout the scriptures, right? That he would raise again. That's the story. You see that in the creation, the nature, we're in springtime, we go through the cycles. Of the season, the death, burial, resurrection. We love the spring, then we go in the summer, we go into it, zenith. We see the fruition. So, Yahshua has given us many examples, but the creation, it testifies of Yash Messiah. His death, his burial, his resurrection. And that's how you come to know him. You have an intimate knowledge relationship with your Savior, with the Fathers, to, you know, these principles, you know, of death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, 40. Thank you, everyone. Uh, for taking time to come to our class and, and listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Ryan Harris. For our second speaker, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Lionel Van Monshu from our Hamilton, Canada class. Dr. Van Monshu. Well, can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. There you go. I thought you'd start talking. I hear a dog barking in the background. You never know. So, uh, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. That's all right. You know. Um, well, it's a 
<laughs> anyway, it's a, it's always a pleasure to be here. A bit of a surprise. It's been a while since I've been uh, been on the uh, Charlotte uh, Zoom class, and it's not because I'm trying to stay away from you guys, but it means just life has a really strange way of sucking you into all kinds of foolish things to earn a paycheck. Like you know, uh, I work on call basically with my job. But anyway, that's neither here nor there, and we just kind of carry on with as best we can. As a, as a quick note, I, I did wasn't here at the very beginning, so I'm sorry, but I'll try and carry on as best I can with what uh, Yashua puts on my heart and mind. I'll just say this real quick that um, some of you folks may or may not know, but there's a discussion underway to work towards seeing if some of the Zambian brethren can come to North America this class and attend some of the events and visit some classes in person. And, and the reason for that is the same reason we have these classes, and that's really to instill and reinforce and continue to work on uh, making sure that our foundation is sound and sure, right? And it's not us doing it anyway, as, as, as Ryan was talking about. It's Yahweh who's creating things and willing it all to be, and it's the same as with the Ashla Messiah. He's the teacher, and he brings it to our remembrance. And he's also the same one that's supposed to be rising, residing in you and I, that is also doing the revelation, doing the revealing. He's doing it all. So, you know, we're just, uh, you know, vessels here to, to work the purpose, work the purposes. Yeah, we wills it to be done. And with that, we're susceptible to all kinds of challenges and all kinds of issues. So let's do this. Uh, let's go to scripture uh, lesson, please. Hebrews, the second chapter. <clears throat> Great. Therefore, we all to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Yeah, we have to give the more earnest heed or pay attention to these things that we've heard from the beginning, unless we've let them slip. And you know, that when we came into these classes, perhaps, or came exposed to these classes through the moderation, just emphasizing and pointing out the different witnesses of, Yah of Yahweh's power is manifested through Yahshua the Messiah, the Holy Spirit, <coughs> and, and continue over and over again, right? Don't let these things slip. Well, what happens if you let these things slip? I think, you know, we're, we're proud people sometimes, or just humanity is proud. Oh, we got this. We got that. We have it all figured out. And then lo and behold, we get ourselves in trouble, or we get away from the foundation of what we're supposed to be focused on and standing on in his surety okay so let's do this pause there in hebrews the second uh two and one let's go over to deuteronomy the fourth chapter and uh verse one now this is over in hebrews that's after pentecost so there there's a warning to those sons in yahshua that are some sons in yahweh sons of yahweh that not to let things slip so it's not a new thing this same principle of people letting things slip or taking their eye off the prize or not focusing on the gospel is all along going over and over again, right? So in all of these examples, as Ryan was talking about that adversary, it all works to accomplish the purpose that Yahweh set up. So let's go here. Deuteronomy 4 and 1, please. Deuteronomy 4 and 1. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes that unto the judgments which i teach you for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which yahweh elohim of your fathers giveth you that's right so thanks I'll, I'll try not to interrupt you during the verse so I'll kind of go one verse at a time like that just for a flow i guess but perfect thanks so these this is the deuteronomy is the second reading of law and you know whether they may go over to that possess that land or not they have to you know have that law repeated when you have a child or you're, let's say you're training a pet, as I heard dogs barking, you know, if you're trying to train them or anybody or in the workplace, you're not just going to tell them once. You may tell your child not to, to go to the stove and touch the stove because it's hot and think that's, that's sufficient. You have to tell them multiple times and they still may go over to that stove and touch the element or touch the surface and have a degree of, unpleasurable experiences there right over and over again right verse two verse two ye shall not add unto the word which i command you neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of yahweh your elohim which i command you so don't add to something don't change it don't let it slip keep it fast be reminded 
take the correction, all of these examples. So we're gonna we're gonna jump around a bit just because that's the way it's gonna go. So finger there, let's go over to Revelations, right at the back of the book, and let's go to what what uh, John's saying out there in the Isle of Patmos, and it's the twenty second chapter. And let's go down into uh, uh, 22 and 18. Then we're going to go back over there to where we are in Deuteronomy 4. Revelation. And if these, things, if these things have already been covered by by some, by some Ryan or other speakers, I'm sorry. But this is kind of where I'm at and where we're going. So, uh, Sorry, Anifa. Can you read it? My page is torn right here. <laughs> Sure, not a problem. 22 and 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. See, he's repeating and repeating over and over again. Don't add to this. He's, te he's testifying. He's proclaiming. He would be speaking with the full zeal and the power of Yahshua manifested in him to those people that would read what he's writing. And what he's written, he's probably also going to, or he's also going to tell the people that will be in his circle or that would come into his circle of life and all those things. Because it's constantly so important to go back over and over. Don't add to these things. Just like, don't add to it. Don't change it. Don't try to prove it. You see right there on that chart, in the middle left-hand side, you see Aaron, right? And lo and behold, what happened there is they start fooling around and bringing strange fire, right? And, the, and Nadab and Abayu didn't uh, meet with a very uh, enjoyable uh, ending, as it were, right? They were consumed by fire, or, or you can read that in, in Leviticus 16 or 10 or so forth. But anyway, you can look that up at your own leisure. But you don't change things. You leave it the way it is, All right? Okay, uh, next verse. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. That's right. Yeah. And don't, so don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Right. Leave it the way it is. Make sure that we and, and the challenge and, and the charge for all of us is to pass it on as we've received it to the next vessel. Regardless of how long we're in the flesh, however long this creation goes on, we have to pass it on to the next vessel or soul as we've received it, as the witnesses, the law and the prophets dictate, as uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20 speaks about, you know, that, yeah, we created, you know, the things in the creation testify of the of, of his purpose and plan. You know, see it all the time with well, springtime up here in Hamilton, Canada with the death burial. And now we're watching the beautiful resurrection of leaves popping out of the buds and all those things. It's amazing. Love it. OK, so don't add to it. Don't change it. And you don't want to have your name taken out of that book. Now, remember back there with Moses, when he when the, the children of Israel had sinned, he said to Yahweh, he said, hey, blot my name out of the book. Right. But that wasn't his role. That wasn't his plan to be have his name blotted out of the book. Although he was trying to act as an as an intercessor. That's not really his role. He's more of a type and shadow of that low priest when there's really a true high priest, which is Josh the Messiah who corrects all things and does all things for a purpose. So let's go back over to Deuteronomy 4, and we'll go down to um, verse 7. Deuteronomy 4 and 7. For what nation is there so great who hath an Elohim so nigh unto them as Yahweh our Elohim and all things that we call upon him for? He's providing for them continually they knew him as El Shaddai beforehand right and and then wait the name of Yahweh was revealed to Moses at the burning bush and such a great Elohim that's going to bring them into bondage and then bring them out of bondage so then they had to sing that song of victory as they come on through coming on through that Red Sea and look behind them and you know there's that adversary there is the swallowed up in the Red Sea and he provided for them and they're they were fed and they were clothed and yet they still grumbled right you know, they had the, the meat in their mouth and they're grumbling about something else. And, and, and we're not much different. And, and we have to be calmed and be still and, and, and be stilled by the power of Yahshua within us, you know, which we don't get of ourselves. OK, but read on. A first. And what nation is there so great that has statues and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I have set before you this day? Yeah, look at around. Look, these children of Israel, look at us. We got these laws. We have a way of escape. 
you know, if we say we can offer, we can offer a sacrifice and there's a day of, look at all of these things that are set before us, right? How powerful and wonderful it is that we have a Yahweh Elohim who so loves us, right? <clears throat> look at us this these days, <clears throat> excuse me, for us that are in this school that have been tasted of the fruit of the spirit. They look how, how wonderful it is, how great these things are, how great these witnesses are, right? It's the same kind of thing, and yet sometimes people have a tendency to forget the witnesses, run off on some other different tangent, or try and prove it, or try and explain something a little bit different than what, what Yahweh, through Yahshua the Messiah, had tended to do. Or we took for granted these, this wonderful teaching. Or we, took for, we, took, we were negligent and started following people rather than the gospel. Following people rather than the spirit. Okay, I'm not trying to beat on anybody. The same thing applies to myself as well. Okay, all right, we'll read on, nine. Nine first, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thy eyes have seen, and lest thou depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them to thy sons and thy son's sons, yeah. So when they were there over there in Hebrews, the second chapter verse, you know, give the earnest heed, lest you let those things slip. I paraphrase that very choppy, but unless you let them slip, take heed, pay attention, right? Keep thy soul diligent. Why would you care about your soul for? Because your soul can be lost. Yes, all souls are Yahweh Elohim's for sure. But you don't want to have your soul lost and be found in the, in the, in the lake of fire or come up short. Okay. Not that you control all those things, but by being obedient. These children of Israel had the opportunity to go into the promised land if they were obedient. Now, they would need to have a change of heart and, and a change of spirit and all those things. But that's a different matter, different lecture and so forth. But as an example unto us, it's so important to pay attention to those things we've heard, we've seen. Don't forget with what your eyes have seen and what you've heard and let it depart from your heart, lest it depart from your heart all the days of your life. But, but also, the colon is... Teach them to your sons and your sons' sons, right? You've got to pass that on to the next generation, the next listener. These Zoom classes that are all over the place. If someone punches in something on the computer, it comes up on YouTube or whatever else. And this is also a form of passing on to those sons that we don't even know. When you, when you think about some of the classes of some of the folks have come back into class who had departed over years and years ago or never had any exposure to this class that pop up here and there again, it is incredible. We have, there's another Canadian fellow out there, George, in uh, Belleville, Ontario, that used to go to the Kingston class, and that class uh, disappeared at some point in time, and whatever, and then, you know, after a period of time, next, you know, he's uh, looking up the classes and finding them on the internet, and then following the classes and communicating with brethren and join the various Zoom sessions. I'm not saying this to pump any, any you know, pump of his tires, but it's that spirit that kind of brings people to where they need to be. And it's such a blessing. It's all through grace and mercy and to be extremely humble for anything we've come to receive. But teach your children, your sons, sons, okay? Verse 10. Especially the day that thou stoodest before Yahweh thy Elohim in Horeb, when Yahweh said unto me, gather me the people together and I will make them hear my words. He, he's they, gonna, he, sorry, Tony. He's going to make you hear his words. You can sit back and say, oh, I'm listening. I'm paying attention. No, no, no. He's going to make you hear his words. They were so afraid. The reverberation. He's going to feel that on an internal basis. When the founder had the, received this divine vision, he was just caught up. Right? He, he's feeling the words. He's, he's back there going through all of the things that Moses and John had seen in their visions and so forth, that Yahweh Elam is going to make you hear. Why? Because he's not going to leave an excuse. Okay, read on. That they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Yeah, if, and that fear is the beginning of knowledge. That fear is the beginning of reverence. That there's a consequence if you don't learn, right? If there... If there were no laws when you're taking your driver's lesson and your instructor doesn't tell you about stop signs and all those different things and merging onto the highway, well, you're probably not going to pass your, your state exam anyway. But then you're not going to understand the consequence. If you blow a sign, you get a ticket. Or if you blow a sign, hit somebody, you're going you're gonna to kill somebody. Or, or you're, you're, you're drinking and, and driving under, or you're under the influence and you, uh, you know, uh, 
kill somebody, then you could be reliable for all those things from a homicide standpoint, you know, but if you don't know those rules, you know, you're going to run yourself in all kinds of problems. And, and you know, he makes it, sets it up. So he explains these things that may, that you can have that reverence and that fear. And he's going to take them back here, get back to that mountain. What happened at that mountain? As you see on the left-hand side of the Mount side, they're making a covenant. There is a marriage ceremony, which you read about in Exodus, the 24th chapter. All that Yahweh said they would, said they would do, and they broke it, and they broke it again. And they get, lo and behold, in the center of the chart there, you see there's that tabernacle, and they could go back and offer sin for the sacrifice and the things they did wrong. And we have atone, on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would atone for his sins because he wasn't above anybody else, he, you know. He's in that position, but he, he has to atone for his sins, the sins of his family, the sins of congregation, right? He had to go into that, in that tabernacle. He wasn't going in there without blood, and he has to follow the exact steps that was set up, laid before him. He can't take a shortcut, you know? And you and I in the center state can't take a shortcut, you know? And sometimes we have to work uh, from a standpoint of checking these things out, but that understanding comes through revelation. You know, we've all taken courses in school, college, university, elementary, whatever level of school that what people are in. You know, you read stuff, you understood it enough to pass the test, but you didn't understand it enough to apply it in the workforce because that wasn't your calling or wasn't that wasn't revealed to you or whatever else. You know, I'm not a biologist, but I study biology. You know, I ha I'm not a mathematician, but I study calculus. I got the credit somewhere on my high school diploma, but I'm not doing anything with calculus or algebra or whatever else. But I learned enough to know to get through the test, but not enough to do anything with it from a foundation standpoint is really what I'm trying to tell you. Go down to verse 12, please. Fourth verse. And Yahweh spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only you heard a voice. Yeah, you saw it. You, uh, you saw no similitude. Right. You heard the voice. That's it. You, there was nothing there that you could determine to say, you know what? Yeah, well, him is is an oxen or any, you know, any kind of creature flying. There was nothing that you could see. That was important to give you that understanding of that a brief glimpse of you know pure spirit that you're not going to create any <laughs> kind of your own vain imagination. OK, read on. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even. Ten Commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And Yahweh commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land, whether you go over to possess it. Yep. Let's go over to twenty-two. This is Moses writing, right, 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 you know, going through this law here as it's given to him. But uh, yeah, four and twenty-two. Okay. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan. But you shall go over and possess that good land. Yep, he, he, he's going to die. So he could just say, you know what, I don't care anymore. I'm going to die. I'm not going over there. Forget you people. No, he's being a good steward. He has a finite time. He, his, Yahweh's purpose was not for Moses to go over into that Canaan's land. He's working with Moses as a vessel. He's raising him up there in Pharaoh's house to demonstrate the, that power of that spirit within him, that he loved the brethren more than the riches and the seasons that he had there in Egypt and, and slew the Egyptian defending his brother. And then he spent the 40 years in the wilderness. He's got to bring him on back down into Egypt again. You know, with, with, he didn't want to go back down there, made excuses and all kinds of things and so forth. And you and I make all kinds of excuses why we can't do something or whatever else it is, you know, but he's not going to go over, but he's still going to declare all that's on him or the, all that's in him is he has to give that declaration. Okay, read on. Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of Yahweh your Elohim, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which Yahweh the Elohim has forbidden thee. No. For Yahweh thy Elohim is a consuming fire, even a jealous El. You know, and you may say, I don't have a dashboard Jesus, and I don't have the Lord's Supper in my dining room, kitchen, or whatever, dining room, or whatever else. I've got nothing I'm worshiping like that. At the end of the day, you and I are very susceptible to the idols that rest between our ears. 
how our own self concept and our own vanity of, of who we are, who we think we are, and, and all of those kinds of things, or the people we look up to from a physical fleshly standpoint, those are also idols that can also distract you and take you, take you away. Don't put anyone before Yahweh, right? Don't have any, nothing. He's consuming fire, right? He's a consuming fire. So let's do this. Let's go over to, uh, there's Moses. He said, he's going to die. He's not going over, but he's telling them, take heed unto yourselves. So let's go see what Peter has to say. Okay. I'm just, sorry. I'm jumping around here. Working your Bible out, working the pages out of your Bible. <laughs> um, Peter, I think it's the, always helps if I tell you where to go, right? Uh, second Peter. And let's go to Second Peter 1 and 12. Second Peter 1 and 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. See, he is filled with the Holy Spirit at this point in time, and he is sent, telling those, those sons of Yahweh around him, even though you know it, even though you know the, the migratory pattern, even though you know the tabernacle, even though you know the days of creation, even you know about the institution of fulfillment, even though you know about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and have that supposed to have that spirit in you, he is still going to put them in remembrance, even though they're establishing them. And that's why some people would say, well, why are you guys still talking about Moses for? Every time we come to this class on Zoom or in person, it's Moses, Moses, Moses. Give me something new. Well, that's just like the children in the, in the wilderness there. They, they had that, they got that meat in their mouth. They're finding something else to complain about. Maybe they wanted ribs or they wanted something. Who knows what they wanted, but people are always complaining, but he is determined that as long as he's in this physical body back there, that he is going to establish, keep them in that established and present truth. And, and, and the first Corinthians one and 15 says the same thing where, where, Saul is there. He's telling those people, listen, you know what? They, moreover, he's declaring the glad tidings unto them where they're wherein they stand, and you may be saved if you keep in remembrance. It's all about remembrance. And who's bringing that remembrance? It's Yahshua Messiah is doing that in you, as you can read about in John 14 and 26. And maybe we'll get there, but we'll see. Go over verse 13, please. 13. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Yeah, keep going. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, has showed me. Didn't we just read in 422 that Moses was going to die? Yes. Right? And Peter's going to die too. He's going to come out of that tabernacle. But the spirit in Peter is that, that spirit that quicker than it doesn't die. He's going to die that first death. But Peter's not going to die that second death. And, and he doesn't want the people he's writing to then, now, and forevermore to also die that second death. So he's going to keep it in the remembrance, right? The first death is one thing, we know, you know, painful in some cases, but, you know, but you don't want to die that second death, which is the spirit, right? You know, you don't want to die that death, knowing that shortly he's going to have to take off this tabernacle as the Messiah demonstrate well ryan just talked about it how long the messiah was walking on the earth point not for very long years not like he had a big gray beard and was really old no he was there to accomplish in the as the as the name chart had on there pull it up for a second ryan or, or whoever's got the charts bam right at the bottom there yashua physical form of yahweh manifested in the flesh and then goes on to give you a bunch of references in the scripture to check up as yashua the material uh, as Joshua and the material creation. Okay. So he's in this manifested state doing the will of the father. Cause Yahweh is a unity. He's, he's taken on that physical form to accomplish his will. So there is no excuse. Look, there he is. He's, he's demonstrated the will of the father, him and the father are one, the words he spoke, Joshua spoke, weren't the words that come from him. He went the words the father gave him to speak. That's that unity. Okay. But, uh, but Peter's telling them, to make sure that he's going to stir them back, putting in remembrance all the time. Verse 15. 15. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Yeah, he's going to try and get the point over to you really hard to make sure that you understand that, you know, and 
that and there's there's a fear it would be a, a plot implied in there as i think about it from a standpoint of making sure listen you don't want to die that death you don't want to come up short you don't want to be like the story of lazarus and dives where there's you know the, that rich man there and 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 you know he didn't want to look at the law of the prophets send someone back to, to tell my family as the it's in luke somewhere someone can get it at their own leisure but anyway you, you know you want to make sure that he's going to set it up and you think what blessings are sometimes you guys put on like a a, a kinley lecture which is beautiful sometimes with the transcript sometimes not i guess or so and just another reminder not that we're worshiping kinley but looking going to back to the words that were spoken through him which is yash the messiah illuminating that body and and preaching that gospel okay because it's Joshua the messiah in there preaching Joshua messiah is the teacher and that's why it's wonderful to go back when people get confused uh if you're making a recipe and it doesn't turn out what do you do well i'd order in but 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 <laughs> <laughs> but if you were looking at a recipe and it didn't turn out you know you'd go back to the recipe and you'd say well i yeah i had two eggs yeah i had a little bit of yeast i had some sugar Oh, man, I got the wrong kind of flour. What you know, you'd go back and you work it back to the beginning. You'd go back to troubleshooting. If you're fixing a car, you do the same deal. Man, the car was running rough. You're going to go back and take a look at it to make some adjustments to go back to the source of the problem. In this day and age, with the gospel, with the gospel of Joshua Messiah, there's just one evangel. It's Joshua Messiah. It's important when we think we're getting off track to go back to the source, to go back to the materials, go back to the law and the prophets. Then you'll find your way, or your way will be found for you by Yash the Messiah. Uh, verse 16. 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, for what eyewitnesses of his majesty. Yep, cunningly devised fables. Boy, they came from people you respect and love. What? You're saved in Kinley? What? Really? No, you're not. That's a fable, right? You don't see Kinley in your strongest concordance anywhere. You don't see Kinley in any of your Bibles anywhere, right? <laughs> You're not going to see him there in your dictionary as being your savior, okay? Or birth sons or all these different things or, or, or you know, all whatever else. It's not to make fun of folks. Sometimes people run off with an idea. They hear something that sounds really interesting. Say, look at this new thing I heard. And they get all excited and they, they can't wait to text and blast all their friends. And lo and behold, the thing had no foundation, you know? The founder said, listen, you know, get all you can. Be in, become, be regular in attendance because um, you're going to need all the information you need. Why? Because because <laughs> you're going to hear things that aren't correct and you have to be, be what? Prepared to reject it. Not be prepared to turn away and say, oh, we got better tomorrow. They had a bad day. We're all susceptible to make mistakes. I absolutely am. I make mistakes all the time. And if I make a mistake, then <laughs> I'm hoping my email gets lit up or my phone gets left that someone helps me out and corrects me and shows me something. That I missed, or, or you know, you got to take these things, right? We don't want to follow commonly advised fables, okay? Uh, 17. 17. For he received from Yahweh the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That's right. We all know when we get down to the 20th and 21st verse there that, you know, the, the, the holy prophets or the scriptures didn't come by any private interpretation, okay? I just went there from a standpoint, hey, Moses is going to die. He's going to still preach the same thing up to his last death. The, the You know, the founder came down on, on 75, and that uh, Christmas lecture is whatever you want to call it. I guess sometimes people call it that way, but it's not not really about Christmas, but to, to admonish the brethren, right? To stick to the information you've received that you've checked out. Not that you have any glory in what you've checked out, but you've gone through to check out things that as you speak to people common in the world, they can also see it as well that what you see, no J, they can see their dictionary. They may not have the revelation to take on the reality of what that no J means, but they can see it, right? If Yashua provides a revelation or not anyway, but, but the information is clear for everybody to see. These classes here, we're not hiding somewhere in some bunker, sending out these lectures to each other in, in secret notes or whatever else. This is out for the public, right? That's crucial. That's why these schools had all kinds of conferences and events, because this gospel must be preached. And if you're, right? And uh, Habakkuk 2 and 1, I think it is. So I want to go, please. Habakkuk 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch. 
and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Yeah, he's, he's going to, you know, he's going to, I will stand on my watch. He's, you know, set me on the tower and watch to see what he's going to say. What are you going to say when you're approved? When someone's correcting you, what are you going to say? Right. You know, well, let's look up that word reproved if someone can do that. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, we all have moments in time where we can be, need to be corrected and so forth. And, and, and as well, it's the vision is made clear and plain for everybody. And that's like in the next verse there. I don't know if someone's able to look up reproved. I have reproved. Thank you. Sure. Reprimand or censor someone. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, and what are, and he will say unto me, what, what what shall I answer when I'm reprimanded, right? Because <laughs> you know what's gonna happen? We're all gonna come up short, right? We've all come up short, you know. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna, are we gonna be like Cain? You know, yeah, we didn't like our sacrifice, we're gonna go slay our brother, or are we gonna, you know, seek mercy and 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 maybe trade with our brother, for example. Yeah, you can't go back and change the story because the narrative is that. You know, Satan's running rampant the, the, the kingdom, and it's, it's where Ryan was probably starting to go to there in Revelation, the 12th chapter. You know, he's loose for a little season. He's out to accomplish his purpose as well, which is not exclude, not, not outside of Yahweh's purpose and plan, but it's within Yahweh's. He didn't create himself, right, as, as the previous speaker spoke spoke about. Okay, when we're approved, what are we going to say, right? Are we going to get all hot? Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Or you haven't had the revelation. It hasn't been revealed to you yet. Well, but if you're wrong, it's never going to be revealed. Or the lie will be revealed even more. And it's called a, del it's called a delusion. Right. right. Verse two. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Write the vision. Yep. Remember, you know, as folks have told the story, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, uh, R.P. Kinley was was uh, was asked to paint the charts, right? And he's and he paints something with oil or whatever or whatever kind of. I'm not a painter, so but he paints something, and, uh, and then then Dr. Kinley would see that. No, no, you got to change it. It's not right. You know, <laughs> you get flustered, right? You know, give me the vision if you want me to paint the charts. Give me the vision, mm -hmm. right? You know, because you need the vision has to be written plain, and all these charts in these classes are such precious precious things to look at and and um when we have class in, in my house which we had this last sunday i've still got five charts up here in my living room and it's great because you look at them and it's not art it's not there for that but you look at them and say like, man I, i'm seeing scriptures on those charts that have been there my entire life that i never never read or maybe i never even saw the scripture on there you know and, it, and it, it, stuff just jumps right out at you and it's such a beautiful humbling experience write the vision Make it plain upon the tables. Read on. And everyone may read it fluently. That, ever, that everyone may read it fluently, right? This school can be as simple as one, two, three. <coughs> and also very complicated if you throw up the green chart for a second there. You know, it's as easy as one, two, three. You know, ascending, descending, blood, water, spirit, 40, death, burial, resurrection, right? Those there's a count of numbers and identifying those lines on the chart. And yet it can also be just as complicated as some of the things you see on this chart here that shows the creator image by his creation. You think, oh my goodness, skeletons and nervous systems and babies. But what you still, still see though, you're still seeing there on the left, you're seeing the pattern being made manifest. And you're seeing Elohim there on the left-hand side within that uh, uh cloud in the centerpiece thanks Ryan. you know so you see those divine attributes there which you can connect up with the moses chart all these charts all work together beautifully okay and then you see that tabernacle pattern being made manifest and then you see the migratory pattern which is which is the pattern being brought to life from a standpoint of witnessing all of the steps that are taking place the orders of service be <laughs> manifest with that blood in the tabernacle you got that blood of that lamb down there you got the water of the red sea you got that that water in the labor, you got the Holy Spirit there or the for in the uh, outer uh, court roundabout there for the high priest. You've got them being led by that cloud with that spirit, you know, stand still and see the, you know, coming on out of Egypt, right? Bringing them on out, you know, and then you see the same thing, the same kind of one, two, three with the atom, one, two, three with the cell, 
yep, each individual parts of the, the, the cell, you can break down where the mitochondria is, the powerhouse of the, of, of the cell or the energy. Well, what do you, what do you, what does that altar do in your, what does the altar do in the tabernacle? It's providing heat and fire, but in your body, your intestines or your, your digestive system there, what's that doing? It's providing energy, You're breaking down the food and, and so you can function and all those things. Then you got the death barrel resurrection process taking place with metamorphosis is an egg. And then, you know, going through the change all in the seasons, the death, burial, resurrection, see all these things are even complicated, still also speak to the one, two, three. So there's something for everyone. These are one room schoolhouses. As you think about in the old days when expansion or cutting a uh, growth in America or Canada or whatever country would be, you know, uh, there's not enough people to have a big school. So you're going to go have a one room schoolhouse, but there's something for everybody that is still all within that purpose with of Yahweh that you can't get outside of it, okay? Make it clean, make it, uh, sorry, make it plain upon tables that everyone, everyone may reaffluent. You don't need to go see some hierarchy individual to show you something that you can't see. It should be clear for everybody, okay? Now, sometimes you may even want to go to them and ask them some, some, you know, maybe a little more clarification or how would you set this up or how does this match with that, right? Because we all have different skills. Ryan does the tech stuff here, for example. Um, I don't do that stuff. You know, I could take a picture of a chart, upload it to a Zoom file, I guess, or a Google Meets, but I'm not doing, I'm not that good at that stuff. So I may go to him for that. But if I need a scripture, I may go to Roxy or I may go to Sasha, right? If I want to sing, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Sheree, <laughs> right? You know, just using an example. And if I'm looking for someone with passion and heart and, and determination all by themselves, I'm going to Sybil. You know what I mean? Because because you get strength and courage from all those folks there. I'm not just pointing out from example. People have that that we all have gifts and we have talents, and the talents and gifts we have aren't for our advancement of our career. It's for preaching the gospel. Sure, we can use some of these things for our career because we got to put bread on the table, and we got to eat and survive. But really, when it boils down to it, <laughs> your employer doesn't care about you. <laughs> Hate to tell you, you know, but Yahshua in you is the only thing that is worth anything at all. You see that price tag at the bottom of that chart on the left-hand side, you know, if you took all the components and stuff, the only thing that's really value is not the 598. No, nope, it's the Holy Spirit that's supposed to be in you. The vision has to be clear and plain for people to run with it. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and 1. Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Yeah, now that's not going to work in, in, in some communities or some countries these days. What? You coming for water and you're not coming with money? Right? Somebody wants to get paid for stuff, even if it's not theirs. Right. But he's telling them, come to the waters and that you you got no money. Come you buy. Even though you got no money, you can still eat and have water and partake of these things. You know what I mean? This is the, the out of the out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's what we're dispensing here. We're not no one's asking you. You're not going to see a, a, a screen pop up. Hey, send your donations to uh, www dot whatever it is. Right. This is people are giving their time that free will love to what? Preach the gospel. Okay, read on. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Yeah. And and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. That's right. Well, you're spending money for things that aren't bread or 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 not or doing things that don't edify. Yeah, everything's lawful for you to do, but you know, but it doesn't edify. If it doesn't edify, then you leave it alone, right? You're coming there to be partakers. And verse three. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Yep, come, eat, right? Your soul may shall live. That's the important part. All these things that your soul may live, right? That's you know, we came in these classes said many times the founder or various witnesses of the earlier days of these schools, you know, you came in the door, you're dead on arrival, right? That's, 
I heard that as a, as a little kid coming to class here in Hamilton from Dr. Chan or Billy Carroll, the various specials and stuff. You came to these classes dead on arrival, right? But there's hope that you arrived. And if Yasho quickens your spirit, that your soul may live, right? That's why back in Deuteronomy 4, he said, listen, you know, let you keep, let you keep your soul, right? The same thing that Peter's talking about over there at the tail end of uh, uh, Second Peter, where we were earlier. Right? Why is he doing all that stuff? Not so he get more high fives or earn credit somewhere. No, he's doing it because the gospel needs to be preached to pass it on to the next folks. That's why we labor at these different things. But go down. Let's go down to uh, verse eight, please. Eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Elohim. Yep. You want to you want to try and figure out anything about Yahweh's purpose and plans? Is a group, massive gulf between them. You can go back and put the Moses chart up, please. It'd be great. You know. For Yahweh's thoughts are not man's thoughts, right? And, you know, there's a big difference between the two. We can try and, we all try and figure it out and guess this and guess that, but they're just that guesses. And sometimes you just got to leave things where they are and just wait for, wait for that revelation to come to you and, and be diligent to keep yourself focused on those witnesses and those things that are important. Okay, read on. Nine, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yeah. You want to understand something about Yahweh's purpose and plan? This is very similar to Romans 1, 19 and 20, right? You want to, he's giving a physical example, right? Yahweh's thoughts are different than your thoughts. Well, okay, here, look at the heavens. See how high they are, right? They're so much higher than where you are, where you think you can be and all those things. There's a big difference there. But it's all there to demonstrate his purpose and his plan. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Yeah, practical example for people to understand, right? We all need things to understand. As a kid growing up, I, I reverberated from my mind and heard it so many times that the physical points to the spiritual, right? Those physical examples have a spiritual counterpart. On the Cardinal Lawrence's chart, those, those circumcisions and ceremonies and stuff like that on the left-hand side of the chart. Yeah, we're, we're circumcision is fulfilled. You're not doing it anymore on, the, on this side after Pentecost. But there is a spiritual counterpart to circumcision. It's not about taking the scalpel and cutting off the, the fleshly part of people's private parts. It's about that cutting away of that, of that old man, that, where the cutting away without hands. And those baptism, it's not with water. Be immersed in the name of Yahshua the Messiah and the gospel and the truth. Right, the sacrifices. What sacrifice do you do in this age? You know, we're not here opening our wallet, but we're we're given of all we got that we've been provided in terms of the spirit to sacrifice of ourselves to maybe help lift up somebody else to give a couple morsels of what we have received through grace and mercy to help them be encouraged to look it up. And it's not us doing it anyway. It's Joshua that if he wants it to be, he'll cause that revelation for anything to be revealed than anybody else, just like we received it. We weren't, we weren't worthy of anything. But that the physical example helps us understand something about Yahweh's purpose and plan. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So that water comes down, right? It gives life to the seed and the seed grows up. You can make bread with it and do all these different things. And yes, the thorns and thistles come up too because they have a certain in that mix too. But it's accomplishing that growth and the cycle of life. The water cycle is really important. If you don't have that water, it doesn't evaporate. You're going to have all those problems. It's, you know, it's that cycle of life is so crucial from a physical standpoint. But in the 11th verse, so shall the word of that goes forth out of his mouth. The word that comes from Yahweh Elohim, that word will not return to him void. Right? And he's preaching that gospel. You look at the top, Yahweh is pure spirit. And you know that the word of Yahweh went forth. Right? And it's going to accomplish his will. He was instituting first to set up a way, uh, setting up various different principles and so forth, saves and childbearing. Listen, it's gonna it's gonna rain and it's gonna rain and it, wait, it's not gonna rain. You're not gonna kill people with with floods anymore, like everybody. It's, people still die from floods, but he's not taking up the world with with the flood anymore. So there's a rainbow covenant. Wait, there's a circumcision taking place with Abraham. Change his name, right? 
So he's going to lead the children of Israel, lead them out, right? That word's not going to return to him void. Those children of Israel, all through that, those all line up together again. They're all the story to lead you through. You know, he's going to bring them to a place. Abraham has said, hey, you got to go to a place you know not of. You know, and through his seed, he ends up down there in Egypt. All through what? Through all that purpose to bring them into bondage. So then what? Show the power of his namesake, to, which is what? Yahshua, which Yahweh is salvation. And when they experience salvation, you think, yeah, we experience salvation. Hallelujah. We're with you. We're going all the way. They came up short. You and I came into these schools. We learned about Yahweh's purpose and plan, the tabernacle patterns, the scriptures, line upon line. Thank you. I see I got five minutes left. And yet, lo and behold, we came up short because what somehow along the line, we got cocky amongst ourselves and we started to take our eye away from the witnesses and got pretty close to getting tripped up where we'd be brought back again, all working, all recording his purpose and plan. But the word of Yahweh is going to go forth and will not return to him void. Yahshua the Messiah was there preaching that, fulfilling, preaching the gospel to those, those souls there. He, he ascended to the Father, all according to the scriptures, died, raised again. And those sons of Elohim at the bottom right-hand side of the Moses chart, they're raising up. Those sons, those, those folks there in the old prophet that, that believed the report, that were obedient unto Yahweh's purpose and plan and did the best they, the best they could, or those that were his, they're rising up and went in Jerusalem and seen. And wait, he had to tarry, tarry with them for 40 days in the earth plane, bringing back their attention to the words he spoke with them when he was in the flesh. He wasn't, the words he, uh, Luke, Luke 24, please, uh, 24 and uh, 44. And just read the first sentence to start off with. Well, it's probably all one sentence anyway. <laughs> Luke 24. And you said, I'm sorry, uh, start Luke, where? Luke, uh, 20, Luke 24 and 44. I will cut you off partially through here. So if you can read it slow and clear, it'd be great. Okay. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you. The, these are the words I speak unto you. These words he's saying now, after he's died, buried, resurrected, again, quickening spirit. He showed up in that locked room, which you read up early in the chapter. Where? How did he get in here? Right? But he's there. He has the way, ability to pick up his life. You know, he's a quickening spirit. Okay. He doesn't need to go to Lowe's and cut a new key to get into the room. Okay. He's going to do he a asher a. Okay. Read on. While I was yet with you, that yep. all while things. He, while he was yet with them, when he was walking around in the flesh, before he died, buried, died, buried, and resurrected, he was saying the words he's saying now to them before. He didn't change the story after you resurrected. So, no, I'm going to tell you this now. This is the new revelation on this side of the guys. That was all wrong. It's over here. No, he's because they recognize those words. They didn't have the Holy Spirit before he died, very resurrected, and before the Holy Spirit poured out. It hadn't poured out yet, anyway, at this point. But he's bringing them back to the remembrance of what he said to them before, just like in just like in Hebrews, the second chapter, first one, Deuteronomy four, Second Peter one. All the bringing to remembrance constantly. Read on. That all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. That everything concerning Yahshua needed to be fulfilled. Okay, concerning himself. He told them that before he died, very resurrected. He's telling them the same thing after. Didn't change. Read on. Then open he their understanding this is that still they before, might. Yeah, understand the scriptures. Sorry. So this is still before Pentecost, but it's after he died, resurrected. He's drawing their attention back. Then he opened their understanding of the scriptures. Why? So they can see those things where he said, listen, he died according to the scriptures. They could check it out. But they still need the revelation of Pentecost, which can come later. And these folks needed to have their understanding. Those sons needed to have their understanding open to the scriptures. Why? Because they had to contend with the Pharisees and rulers of the day that had those books, you know, to point out and to preach the gospel and point out and correct them and see what see what they're going to say when they're when they're reproved they're going to love the lie rather than the truth 46 and said unto them thus is it thus it is written and thus it behoveth behoveth the messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day so we open their understanding of the scriptures and they, what's he doing the 46 he's taking them right back to death burial, resurrection, that it was, as it was written. Well, what does that mean? As it written, go check it out. See that it's so. See that I'm not a liar, right? <laughs> you know, he knows their heart and mind anyway, but, you know, at 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached 
in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. That's right, that repentance, remission of sin should be preached in his name. It's not anymore getting a goat for a sacrifice or a lamb for a sacrifice and ceremonies and dinners. All that stuff's all taken out of the way. It's in his name. It's a remission. What do you do? You say sorry when you make a mistake. You apologize to someone you love when you when you mess up, because we all mess up, right? Boy, I mess up all the time. And you say sorry, and you take your correction, and you you go with an earnest heart, or, hey, I, I, I didn't understand something. I spoke to you about it. Help me understand. You know, let's, uh, I know there's not much time here. Uh, uh, Acts, the 20th chapter, I think it is. And let's go to verse uh, 19. Acts 19. 20 and 19. Serving Yahweh with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. They were waiting to get him because he was with them, with the Jews before, raised a few to Gamaliel, preaching that Mosaic law, beating on the assembly, killing those, those witnesses that received the Holy Spirit. Lo and behold, that metamorphosis that was on the green chart, Yahweh's working with him and having that change in him that he's now a new creature. Now he is the son of Yahweh. And he, and they, and he had to contend with those people hating him for what he killed. But those true sons will also learn to love him because he's speaking the truth, the unified in the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah. But anyway, verse 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. Yep. So if we went to Tony's house, Tony is going to tell us the same thing that we're going to hear tonight. Or Ryan's house or uh, Nifa's house or, or, or Sybil's house. You can say the same thing. They're going to tell us, say in someone's house, they can say publicly. Right. Oh, come on over to my place. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll explain a little bit different. No, it's got to be out there. It has to be witnesses. And, and the great cloud of witnesses is spoken about in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, because at the end of the day, grievous wolves are going to come and, 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 and have come and are still coming and they're salivating at the mouth. And the only way you can fend those off is with the truth and, and the strength, which is in Yashua Messiah. You and I can't do it, but that's, that spirit can fight them off. And that spirit comes with witnesses, just like he said there in Luke, the 24th chapter. Anyway, I'll praise you, Yashua. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll, I'll be quiet now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lionel Van Monshu. Now at this time, the Charlotte, North Carolina Bible class would like to thank all of our brethren, visitors, and friends for taking the time to come out and study with us tonight and hope that you will come back again. Our class is held on Mondays at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Zoom participants, please remain muted until the host has ended our YouTube broadcast. Now we will conclude tonight's class with the doxology taken from the book of Jude, the last two verses. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both before all time and ever. Let the class say, hallelujah. Hallelujah.